Hey everyone, welcome to the Codeverse channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today's lecture will be the second lecture of the Prime series that is going on. But before telling you what will be uh, today's lecture all about, let me introduce you myself. My name is Raj Vikramaditya. I'm known as Striver in the programming community. I'm a computer programmer. I currently work as a software development engineer at Media.net. Direct I prior to this, I was working at Amazon. I'm also rated a candidate master at Code Forces. I'm also rated a six star at Code Chef. And prior to this, I had a couple of years of teaching experience of competitive programming, data structure algorithms and all the other topics that are essentially required for interview preparation. I have around 90,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So the subjects that I'm going to take on Academy and on this YouTube channel are competitive programming, data structure algorithms, C++ and interview preparation. So in the first lecture, if you remember, we did a fact check about all the primes. We then wrote a code about checking primes. First, we wrote a big O of n code, then we optimized that to something as a big O of square root. Then we learned about how to find factors. We then had a sum of factors stuff. And right after that, we did a practice problem from code forces. Correct? That was uh, what we did. But we learned a square root of n technique. We could not optimize it further. And that technique will not work in some cases. So in today's lecture, I'm going to tell you in what cases will that technique not work. And I'm going to give you an option or I'm going to give you an algorithm which you can use so that you can solve extensive problems at code chef at code forces and even at your coding rounds the topic that we're going to discuss that is sieve the sieve technique I'm not English I'm not an English expert so I'm not going to sieve of erasons uh, I'm not going to pronunciation part so let's keep it as the sieve okay basically computer programmer call it a sieve so I'm going to teach you the sieve technique yes which is going to detect prime in bigo of one yes with some pre-computation i'll be telling you how do you detect the sieve uh, how do you detect the prime in bigo of one so that will be the lecture two we will we will be coming up with lecture three lecture four and lecture five of this prime number series but in order to get uh, in order to know when is when are these lectures coming make sure you press that bell icon so that you get notified the moment the lectures are posted so in order to get access to all these courses, you don't need to buy these courses individually. You can definitely uh, take up a computer programming subscription. It can be a 12 month, it can be a 6 months or a 3 month or a 1 month. If you take it with the help of Striver, so you'll get a 10% discount also. So if you get this, you, you will get access to all the courses and even all the courses that has happened. So you get access to a lot of things. And what you get is India's best programmers. You saw my credentials. You'll get similar or even better people than me who are going to teach you such amazing stuff so you also get you're also gonna get live classes i personally believe something like a live class is much much more interactive and that doesn't bore you and you're also gonna get doubt support and also if that is a ds algo course or a cp course you're gonna get practice problems relevant practice problems for a topic from code chef so if you're new to this channel please make sure you like this video and you subscribe to this channel and share this across because you're gonna bring in much much uh series like this and we're going to uh, teach you in free at this channel only so without having a delay let's get straight into the lecture two and that's the sieve what is the sieve uh, sieve as the name suggests before getting into the sieve let's understand the use case where generally the sieve is implicated so i'll give you a very very simple question assume assume i give you test cases okay giving you some input format so I'll give you an input format and the input format states the first line contains test cases. Okay. Right after that, you will have T lines. Cool. So there are T lines. So the first line will contain an integer n. The second line will also contain an integer n, n, n. So all the T lines contains integer n and the output should be output should be having exactly t lines yes the output should be having exactly t lines and every line should say a yes or a no yes every line should say a yes or a no when do you say yes if it's a prime number you say a no if it's not a prime number that is what the question states we're not over yet we are not over yet let's understand for an example i give you t as three okay Test cases are 3. The first is, uh, let's say 15. Then I give you something like 13. Then I give you something like 21. So you have to print. So there are 3 test cases. 
and there are three integers so you have to print exactly three lines okay you have to print exactly three lines so the first line will say is it a prime is 15 a prime no 15 is not a prime so i'll be like no that's not a prime next is 13 a prime i'll be like yes it is a prime so you'll say yes next you'll say is 21 a prime no so you have to print this should be your output yes this should be at your output screen so i hope you have uh, majorly understood the question given t test cases every test case contains a number and you just need to tell us if a number is a prime or not for every test case you need to tell us now uh, just uh, quickly diving into the constraints part of this so the constraint uh, states t will be lesser than 10 to the power 5 okay and uh, assume t is not 10 to the power 5 let's assume t is 10 to the power 6 n will be somewhere around uh, 10 to the power 6 only okay that is what the constraints are i'm saying t is 10 to the power 6 <coughs> sorry as well as n is 10 to the power 6 now you need to figure out uh, what will happen if you apply the method that i taught you on the first day okay so we're going to quickly uh, write the code what we learned on the first day cool so let's erase this code so what are what are we given test cases so let's take the test cases scene of t while of t minus minus in order to understand this you should have definitely seen my previous video previous lecture on this so please make sure you see the previous lecture in order to understand this so can i say i'll call a function which checks me if the number is prime or not if it does if it is a prime i'll say yes if it's not a prime i will say a no that's for sure that is for definite now can i write the check function i can definitely i think you remember i think every one of you remember we're gonna take a integer count equal to zero I'm gonna run a for loop something like from starts from one and that is something like this again minor optimizations can be done but i'm not consulted about minor optimizations you can do minor optimizations here and there but that won't count if it's the worst case remember so always don't look for minor optimizations always look for major optimizations okay that should be the funda minor optimizations so your kids can do but we are not kids right so we're going to do some major optimizations so can i say can i say uh, if count is equal to equal to two we can return a true that it is a prime or else we will return a false so can i say uh, in the first lecture we did learn uh, something like this where we are taking a number n and we are checking if it's a prime or not that is what we learned and i'm going to use this function for all the t times for all the test cases okay perfect 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 so that is what our code will look like as of now but if i uh, talk about the time complexity can i say i'll take a square root time for checking uh, the prime number i'll be like yes i'll take a square root of n to check all the prime number and can i say i'm checking for every number on every test case so can i say the time complexity will be t into square root of n because for every test case there are t test cases there are t test cases for every test case take the n check take the n check take the n check so you're gonna do square root of n for every t line yes so that's gonna be your bigo of t into a square root of n complexity at the worst case what is the no worst case worst case is when in your uh, back end when you submit the code in your back end there is a test case which says i'm gonna give you 10 to the power 6 test cases not three test cases definitely not three test cases on the back end whenever you submit the code they don't have small test cases they have huge 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 test cases and they have they will have some test cases like they'll give you 10 to the power 6 where they'll say that they are 10 to the power 6 test cases and then they will give 10 to the power 6 numbers and every number will be 10 to the power 6 or probably 10 to the power 6 minus 1 or minus 2 near about 10 to the power 6 every number will be near about so can i say the worst case will become then my test case loop will run for 10 to the power 6 and the square root if every number is near about 10 to the power 6 i'm not saying always 10 to the power 6 i'm saying somewhere near about can i say it will be square root of 10 to the power 6 which is 
10 to the power 6 into square root of 10 to the power 6 is 10 to the power cube. That's almost equivalent to 10 to the power 9 operations. At the worst case, if it is equivalent to 10 to the power 9 operations, remember in the first lecture, what did I say? 10 to the power 8 is 1 second. So, assuming, assuming I've been given 1 second or 2 second at max, this is going to take something as 10 seconds. So whenever it takes more time, what is the verdict that you get? That's a TLE verdict. Yes, you're going to get something as a time limit exceeded verdict. And if you're getting something like that, what will you, what, what will you have to do? You have to optimize, optimize the solution. So let's quickly try to do an optimization of this method. Okay. So in order to optimize this, the technique is very simple. We're going to pre-compute. Yes, we're going to pre-compute. What does uh, pre-computation means? We're going to probably uh, store somewhere which is a prime and which is not a prime. Uh, probably let's call it as a black box. Okay, just assume as of now it's a black box. And we're going to pre-compute this. Like before starting our test cases, we will have this black box ready. After that, we will start our test cases. And the moment I take this in, I'll send this to the black box. And the black box will tell me in big of one, he dude, this is prime or dude, this is not a prime. So I, I want to uh, compute this black box. I want to prepare this black box so that in my future, when I get an N, I can easily say this is a prime. This is not a prime. This is a prime. This is not a prime in quick, quick time. I don't have to run square root. So I need to design this black box so that I can pre-compute, pre-compute this black box. And when the test cases come, I can directly answer it. So that will be my logic behind this. So how to design this black box? This is what is known as uh, the sieve. This is what is known as the sieve of Erast Hans, something like that. I am not an English teacher, so I'll not focus on that. So let's call it a sieve. Okay, so we have a sieve technique. So what is the sieve? Uh, so the constraint stated, n is a 10 to the power 6. So 10 to the power 6 is a very huge number. It's a very, very huge number. So obviously I cannot take such a huge number and explain you. What I'll do is I'll, I'll make the number small and whatever number I'll take at first step should be, I'll try to create an array of that number. Okay. It can be a Boolean array. It can be an integer array. So assume we are, we are creating a Boolean array. So just do one thing. You create a Boolean array of some size, some size, which can be, uh, which, which actually fits into my blackboard because I need to under, uh, explain you. Obviously I cannot take a 10 to the power six array and draw. Like 10 to the power 6 array will be my hand, my hand will nahi jayega. So let's, let's quickly draw this array so that I can explain you. Okay. By the way, are you guys understanding this lecture? I hope you are doing, and there's going to be three more lectures and trust me, it's going to be damn, damn useful to you. You're going to, you're going to just love it like anything. So what I'll do is I'll just index this. So don't uh, like right, right after the video ends now, tell me in the chat comment section, like which, which series do you want in the future? Don't tell me in the chat, live chat. It won't help me because after the video is uh, premiered, uh, I will not be able to see it. So please make sure you tell me in the uh, chat, uh, sorry, in the comment section that which, which series do you want? So just make sure you create this C array. It's a Boolean C array and just make sure everything is true except zero and one. Please make sure everything is marked as true except zero and one. Okay. That's the first step. Please make sure everything is marked as true, except zero and one, except zero and one. Please make sure everything is marked as true. Okay. So I made sure everything is marked as true. Uh, I'll just create it till 26 so that because I, I need to explain you something in future, not now. I'll create it till 20. Okay, so I've created till 25 and I've made sure that this is, yeah, this is uh, right now done till this. Cool. So I've created it till 25. So as of now, what's okay, it's fits in. So what I'll try to do is once I've created them, okay, once I've created them and I've marked as marked it as true, I'll ask you, what's the first prime number? What's the first prime number? You'll be like, everyone knows what's the prime number. The first prime number is two. So just take the first prime number. And can I say, I'll just ask you a simple thing. Two is definitely a prime number. Which, which guys can not be a prime number. 
they will be like all multiples of two not factors all multiples of two why something like four will have a factor of two but in order to be prime the factor should be one and itself so can i can i see this all multiples of two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen and so on so on can never be a prime they will be like yes that that actually makes absolute sense i'll be like yes they will not be a prime so what you will do is you'll not say to anything you'll say to you are prime you're okay but your relatives that are your multiples are not prime so will you do me a favor go to your multiples and tell them that they are not prime so he will go to its multiples and tell them ki bhai you guys are not prime okay so let's quickly tell all of them that they are not primes so this is how my black box uh, or the sieve gets started to build okay that's how i'm building my sieve array so i made sure i've told all my relatives to has told all his relatives that hey i am not praying sorry you are not praying okay next next two is done next you will come to three okay so what do you will do on three we will say okay my multiples are 6 9 12 15 18 and so on so can i say Three, go and tell your relatives or tell your multiples. You can never be primes. I'll be like, yes. Three, please go and do your job. So three will go and say, six, you are no more prime. Six is already knowing that he is not a prime. Nine will say, okay. Twelve, he already knows it. Fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, and yeah, we have just taken till twenty-five, so it's over. So three is done. Now. A very very uh, logical question to every one of you. If I take four, if I take something like four, will you go and tell its multiples? Like something like eight, twelve. These are the multiples of four. These are the multiples of four. Will you go and tell? Will you? I'll be like, why will I? Because all the multiples of four were the multiples of two. Observe, 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 karo, observe. Something like eight was already a multiple of two. Something like twelve was already a multiple of two. So the two would have already marked them. Two would have already marked them. Why will four go and mark? So someone who is marked as false will not mark its multiples. Observe, notice, note it down. Someone who is false will not mark its multiples. So he will not mark it. Perfect. So this is also done. Now we'll move to five. Who are five multiples? Who are five multiples? Five multiples are ten, something like fifteen, something like twenty, something like twenty-five, and goes on. So I'll go to uh, I'll go uh, I'll change the color. I'll go to ten. That's that already knows it's a prime. Uh, it's not a prime rather. Fifteen is not a prime. Twenty is not a prime. Twenty-five is not a prime. So I'll mark it. So I made sure five has also marked all its multiples as non-prime. Okay. So In similar way, we will try to do for other numbers. Again, will you mark for six? Six is marked as false. So as we saw, the guys who are marked as false will not mark its multiples because someone else would have already marked their multiples. So will not mark for six. Next, we'll do for seven. Seven. I'll come to optimizations afterwards. As of now, I'm just doing a simple dry run of the sieve. After that, we will optimize our logic. We're going to do a lot of stuffs, but you need to be with me. Seven. Sorry, seven multiples are rather fourteen twenty one because we have just taken n equal to twenty five, so we can definitely do it till twenty one. So fourteen is already knowing it's not a prime. Twenty one is already knowing it's not a prime. Similarly, you can keep on doing for eight, nine, ten until you're twenty five. We'll come to optimizations. You can similarly go on doing till twenty five. And once you have done till twenty five, you will actually get yes, you will actually get your C value to be this only. Why? I'll tell you afterwards. But yeah, we will get this only as our C array. Cool. So if you carefully observe in the C array, once you've computed the C array, now have some observance. Yes, have some observance. Uh, can I say this guy is as a prime? Yes. Can I say this guy is a prime? Yes. Can I say this guy is a prime? Yes. Can I say this guy is a prime? So that's already marked as true if you carefully observe. Seven is a prime. Already marked as true. Something like eleven is a prime, marked as true. Something like thirteen is a prime, 
marked as true something like 17 is a prime marked as true if you carefully observe all the numbers that are prime are actually marked as true and all the numbers that are not prime are actually marked as false perfect i actually created the black box which tells me if a number is prime or not if someone says is 14 a prime you go to 14 and you see false someone says is 19 a prime you go to 19 and you see it's a true so you actually created your black box that i was talking about but is this black box efficient enough we have to make this efficient yes we have to make this efficient so we will now try making this efficient but before that let's write the simple sover code of this right after that we can try making this efficient that that will go on forever right but as of now let's try to make a sover code of, code of this so that we can optimize it the first step is always writing the easy code simple code after that we think of optimizations we never ever start of thinking of optimizations okay so what we will do is we know one thing we have to declare uh so let's uh, do one thing let's write it on over here okay let's write it on our subline so can i say can i say one thing i will require a boolean of sieve array perfect and assume it's a 10 to the power 6 so just in order to maintain a safety i've taken uh, 10 to the power 6 like i've taken the size to be this cool and i can probably define it as int n equal to something like this okay so i have defined a uh, sieve array and as you all know as you all know we have to create the sieve array initially so we can call it as create sieve okay and remember one thing whenever you declare something globally it automatically makes sure that everything is marked as zero so now what i'll do is as i said i need to mark everything as true do you remember the first step was marking everything as true by the way uh, just a quick thought if you can do it for n equal to 25 If if you can do till n equal to twenty five, the logic can you just expand it to something like ten to the power six? Just expand your logic to n ah uh, ten to the power six. If you can do till twenty five and you can create the black box, expanding till ten to the power six will work, na? So that is why I took twenty five so that I can explain you. And right after that, we will expand our logic. Okay. So i equal to two, and as of now, as of now, we'll just keep it as ah uh, n and i plus plus. After that, we will come to optimizations. Can I say? i was actually marking everyone as true so it's a boolean so you can definitely mark it as true so i have made sure that i have marked it as true by the way c++ java guys this thing will be exactly similar in c++ and java like for loop to yaar in both of them are similar so no need to worry so i have marked for 1 2 to n everything as true now what did you do you started from something as 2 and you went on till n and whose multiples did you mark for 2 you marked its multiples for 3 you marked its multiples for something like 5 you marked its multiples so why did you not mark for 4 why did you not mark for 6 because they were marked false go back go back in your memory they were marked as false so can i say if my sieve is only marked as true then only i'll go and mark its multiples Now, if I ask you a very simple question, which is the first multiple of any number i? Which is the first multiple of any number i? It'll be like two into i. Come on, if you don't understand this, I, I'll, I'll smash my hat. Two into i is the first multiple, na? For a number like two, four is the first multiple. Number like three, six is the first multiple. For five, ten is the first multiple. Two into i, correct? So j will go on till n. How much will j increase? For number like five, first multiple, ten, next. Fifteen next twenty increase how much increase by the number itself I you'll just mark them as false doesn't matter if they're previously marked or not doesn't matter if they're previously marked or not you just need to mark them as false it doesn't matter previously if it was marked false true no nah, no matter just mark it so I can say this is how my sieve is ready. or uh, this will actually take a lot of complexity like i can see i have a n loop inside that i'm running one more something like a huge loop that is so obviously i cannot rely on this i need to optimize this so i'll come to the optimizations let's now come to the optimizations okay so the first optimization that i can do is the first optimization that i can think of is so if i change the color to something like orange uh, probably i can do this optimizations at the first level uh, i'm marking for two first optimization that i can see is two started marking its multiples right three in case of three 
don't you think it was useless to mark six don't you think it was useless to mark six indeed it was indeed it was why because three cross it two three cross it two is six and when you did for two two cross it three was six so two would have already marked three sorry two would have already marked six so it's useless to mark six rather i should start marking from nine because that's the first unmarked guy as the first unmarked guy so i have to start from nine perfect uh so let's uh, quickly check out five for five this 10 was already marked why because five cross it two this 15 was already marked why because five cross it three this 20 would have been already marked why because five cross it four which is nothing but five cross it two cross it two and this is again 10 cross it two so two would have already marked 20 two would have already marked 20 so why should you start off from you should start off from 25 do you see a pattern for any number for any number i you should start off with i into i because i into 2 would have already been marked by 2 i into 3 would have already been marked by 3 i into 4 would have already been marked by 2 similarly so on till i into i minus 1 would have already been marked by i minus 1 so you should start off from i into i rather than starting from 2 into i understood i hope you have understood right so where will i start marking from i into i that's the first optimization that you generally do. That's the first optimization that you generally do. Okay, so I've done the first optimization. What about the next optimization? Let's come to the next optimization. So we'll take some other color. Uh, probably we'll take, uh, I don't think we have a lot of colors. So let's take uh, this white only. So do you observe something? If the number was 25, and my inner loop, my inner loop was starting something like this, j equal to i into i. That was where my inner loop was starting, if you know. j lesser than equal to n and j plus plus. That is how my inner loop was starting, correct? So, just in case of uh, when you reach 6 in this case, when i is 6, when the external loop is 6. So, what will be this value? j will become 6 into 6, 36. This will become j lesser than 25. Will this loop any day run? No. If you take 7, the inner loop will start from 7 into 7. If you take 8, the inner loop will sta uh, stand, uh, sorry, start from 8 into 8. If you take 9, the inner loop actually starts from 9 into 9. If you take 10, the inner loop actually starts from 10 into 10. If you take 11, the inner loop actually starts from 11 cross at 11. So, hypothetically thinking, there is absolutely no need of going beyond 5. Why? Because 5 cross at 5 is 25. Or if I apply reverse logic, can I say, there is absolutely no need to go anywhere beyond 25, square root of 25. The i loop can run till only square root of 25. Because the next loop is j equal to i into i. Because anything greater than square root of 25, well, make sure that this loop doesn't run. So can I do a single more optimization? And can I say, this will be running till square root of i. Like if I just do till 5 in our 25 case, and in our case of n, if I just do till square root of n, my job should be done. Indeed, everyone is agreeing on this. Is everyone agreeing? Obviously. So I can, I can just go on till square root of i. And if I do this, yes, if I do this, the outer loop is running for square root, but the inner loop is somewhere like, it's, it's not accurate you cannot accurately guess the inner loop because the inner loop is running for multiples so you accurately cannot guess it but uh, generally the complexity of the sieve the computation of the sieve is n log of log n which is as good as n which is as good as n that is what uh, the overall complexity of this algorithm stands out that's what the overall complexity of these two loops are like whereas by the way, this will be I, yeah, sorry, I, I made a mess over here. This will be over here. So this will be, this I into I will be over here. Yeah. So just a quick uh, checkup. So this will be over here. So this two loops, this two loops run for n log of log n, 
which is very log of log n is a log n is already small log of log n is already very 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 small so that's why that's why we generally say ki uh, the complexity is n log of log n okay now we might argue the outer loop is running for square root but the inner loop first time it will run for you see na first time it will be like 4 6 till n so that's almost n by 2 times it runs for the first time next time it's almost n by 3 times it runs so n by 2 it's it's kind of n by 2 plus n by 3 i i hope you understand so it it becomes almost equivalent to n logarithmic of log n okay the proof is almost this much you can watch out the proof i'll not be going deep i'll, I'll much more focus on the algorithm so this is how you can create the black box so can i say once you have created the black box my my solution becomes much easier so what i'll do is i'll just instead of calling this check prime can i say right before executing the test case if i call create sieve and i create this entire sieve such that my sieve array is ready instead of calling check prime can i call this black box and say black box can you tell me it is true if it is true it's a prime and if you ac if you are accessing an array if you are accessing an array what is the time complexity in order to access an array that's a big o of 1 so over here you took a big o of n log of log n and over here you're just taking a test case loop so the complexity indeed boils down from this to you're initially taking a log of log n that's the pre computation plus a big o of t which is very small you're not doing t into something you're just taking t and if you remember t is 10 to the power 6 whereas n is 10 to the power 6 so this is near about 10 to the power 6 log of log that's almost almost constant so big o of 10 to the power 6 this is a uh, very very less than 10 to the power 8 so again fits in our time limit so this is how if you are performing prime checks and test cases in queries you're going to use something known as seg uh, sorry uh, sieve okay you're going to use something as sieve so that was that was more about sieve okay so just a quick uh, quick uh, uh, discussion before i end up this lecture now what is the constraints that you can apply sieve on so before that you have to understand in c++ where uh, what is the maximum size of array that you can declare so if in c++ if you are declaring the array inside your main function there is a main function right if you are declaring your array inside it if it's an integer data type array or in double or something like that you can create it of 10 to the power 6 inside your int main so if you are writing your uh, creation of black box logic inside your main or any other function i repeat any other function the maximum size of array can be 10 to the power 6 the black box or the array can have a maximum size of 10 to the power 6 if you are creating of integer if you are creating something of a boolean data type that's a very important thing only of boolean data type the size can be at maximum 10 to the power 7 that means the black box can be of 10 to the power 7 if you declare in uh, it inside any int main inside any function at max it will be 10 to the power 7 okay but what if i say i need more in that case you have to declare globally understand globally now what do i mean by globally uh, as you saw over here i declared something like globally this is what a global declaration is so if you declare globally if you declare globally the maximum size an integer or double or something can be is a of 10 to the power 7 a of 10 to the power 7 and the maximum size of boolean the maximum size of boolean will be a of 10 to the power 8 that's what the integer and boolean will be so if the constraints are still near about 10 to the power 8 what will you prefer you obviously cannot do this which one will you can do you have to declare globally and the boolean integer if you do integer it will be 1 0 but in case of integer you cannot have 10 to the power 8 so just make sure according to the constraints you decide where to declare whether you want to do everything inside the main in outside the global uh, sorry uh, globally or wherever you want to decide what is the maximum size that you want to declare make sure according to the constraints you decide like over here the constraints were stating n is a uh, 10 to the power 6 so i could have done it inside the main i did it globally but i could have done inside the main inside the function that was my choice 
so please make sure the constraints or you apply constraints according to your choice so guys i hope you have understood the entire sieve logic so just in case you did please make sure you like this video and if you're new to our channel make sure you subscribe to this because the next lecture will be coming very very soon and in order to know when it will be coming you need to make sure that the bell icon is pressed now over here we did learn about sieve in the next lecture we will be discussing some practice problems on the concept that we did learn today so guys let's meet in the next lecture bye bye take care stay home stay safe